When you want to create a form, go to drive.google.com or access it at your checkerboard when you're in another app up here at the top right. You can go to Drive and then go to Forms. So when you want to make a form, go to New, pull down, and if you don't see it here, go on over to More, and then click Google Forms. Google Forms are awesome for making surveys, for collecting information and data to analyze, but also for exit tickets and bell ringers in your classroom to test and or to judge and assess understanding of last night's homework or to take a quick poll at the end of the class to see if they understood the lesson you just taught. Lots of ways you can do it, even use it as a flipped classroom activity by embedding a video in it. So here's the form you get. This is the format for forms. You click up here in Untitled Form and you can give it a title. So let's give it a title for what is your favorite pizza? And we're just going to click OK. That gives us our title here and also down the body of our form. You notice that up here in the form settings, when you're in a domain, you have five settings. If you're on your private Gmail account or Google account, you would only have three. We can require that people have to log in to view this form. That's fine if we're not going to share th this with parents or the outside world who doesn't, people who do not have a login for Michigan City Area Schools. If it's to be more public, just uncheck that. Also, do we want to automatically collect the respondent's username? We can do that if we want, and then we can skip putting first name, last name, because it's automatically going to collect that for us and put it in our spreadsheet that will be the collector and the place we go to view all our data or all the information that is input into our form. I'm going to leave it unchecked for now because I'm going to show you how to do first name, last name, but we'll leave it that way for now, but know that you can just do this with your students and skip first name, last name. Some of these other options are here as well. You can shuffle question order, only one response per person, etc. But we'd require the login for them to be able to determine that they've been responding before. So here we go. Here's our favorite pizza. We could give a description here. We are going to have pizza on Friday. Help us decide what kinds to order. This is fun and a great little survey for something like this if your class won a pizza party or you have something special going on. But think about this also that you could actually put a video in here. Right now I can insert either a video or an image. So I could put a piece of work, an art, a piece of art, an artwork here, an image, and have people comment on it and have the questions be about that piece of art. I could put a video maybe it's a science experiment and they watch that science experiment and then the questions relate to that. I mean there are a lot of different ways you can change this with videos and images and all kinds of things. But let's go basic. So the first thing I want to do is first name because I did not collect their autom automatically collect their username. So first name. I don't need help text. I could put help text if I wanted to. And I can choose the type of question. Well, since this is a name field, we just want to be text. They will put their answer here, and do I want to be required? I will click yes, I want required, or check the box, and I'm done. Now, the really cool thing about first name is, when I hover over it, I get options to either go back and edit it, throw it away, or this field is duplicate or copy it. And when I do that, it takes all the information, all the settings, even a required question and the kind of question it is, and just duplicates it. And now I just have to put last name. And I am click done again, and I have two of my fields already. As you progress through this, think backwards design. Think, what do I want my data to look like on the other side? When I see that spreadsheet, how do I want it sorted? That's why I have first name, last name, because I can't sort by first name and last name if I just put name. Uh, but we'll just continue, but just kind of be mindful about how is this going to look on my spreadsheet. So there are lots of different kinds of questions. I could have paragraph text if I want them to have a short, uh, longer answer, like a short essay or the ability to write two or three sentences. I can have multiple choice with one right answer, check boxes for multiple right answers, choose from a list, a scale, all kinds of different things. So right now for this, I just want to know, pick your favorite pizza, and I'll make it multiple choice. Please select your favorite kind of pizza. And 
and I don't need any help text, and I'm gonna make a multiple choice. So now I'm going to put cheese, pepperoni, sausage, and then I'll put veggie. And it's required. They can only choose one because it's multiple choice. And if I wanted to, I could add other. If, for instance, I want them to be able to add something else as a choice, I could leave other, and that gives them the opportunity to type in their answer. If I decide I don't want that, I'm just going to hit that X and it'll go away again. And now I click Done, and now I have three different things. First name, last name, type of pizza, and I could just keep going on and on, and then I could also put, let's just put for fun, let's put paragraph text. Share any other information we may need to know about your dietary needs. And then they can write that in there. We won't make this required. Everything else is required and we can tell by the asterisk, but this is just an optional. So we'll say we're done. That is our survey. We're going to look down here or our form. One thing I like to do sometimes is customize my ending message. So I'll put thanks for sharing your favorite kind of pizza with us. We will have fun at our event. I could show the link to submit another response, which normally you wouldn't want unless it was something where you were doing something like a student council election and everybody kept coming up to the mach same machine and voting for someone. I can publish it and show it as a, a public forum. I can let people go back and edit. So there are lots of ways I could use this. I can go and hit send form here or up here if I was ready to send it. And it's going to give me the normal sharing window that I would get for other documents too, just a normal sharing window. But I'm not quite through. I want to go and I want to give it a theme. So I click change theme up here on the top and I get some options and I might find something looks kind of fun. Um, I can preview them by clicking through them. And maybe I'll see something like, oh, let's see, something festive. How about that? What if, it, what is, what if your favorite pizza? Oh my, I have a mistake. So we're just going to go edit that little mistake and we're going to make it what is your favorite pizza. And notice if I edit it there, I probably have to come back down here and edit it as well. So let me go back and edit it again. What is your favorite pizza? All right, now let's go back and let's look at our live form. We pick the one we like. View live form is that little button there, and this is what it looks like. If I see any other errors, I can go back and correct them, either by hitting edit this form here or by going back through my tabs and finding it there. That is how I set up a survey and create a survey. When I am viewing my live form, I can either copy that URL for people to use when I'm at that website, or I can also, when I'm in here in my edit mode, I can do send form and I have a, a link right here that I can use. So I can just copy that link and that's a link I could hyperlink in an email, put on a web page, whatever I want to do. When I'm ready to go, it wants to know, how do I want to do this? Do I want to make it a spreadsheet? Do I want to always create a spreadsheet? That's what you're probably going to want to do. So if you get this question here that pops up and says, where do you want your responses to go? I would su suggest that you always choose a spreadsheet. It automatically makes your spreadsheet and then it's always there for your data when you want to view it. And let's just go take a look at it. If I want to go back and I want to view my responses right here, I can see my responses. It opens that spreadsheet. It's already created for me. And I would be able to see my responses come in live as people start completing that form. And then we could go on and, and start looking through it, making analysis, have conversations about it, whatever we want to do. To go back to my form, I could go back here and just go right back to form. I can always go show a summary of my responses. This is really awesome when it starts populating because you'll have pie graphs and bar graphs and charts and things you can really use for analyzing it in a mathematical way and all kinds of information here. So I think that's enough for now. This is our Google Forms and how do we make Google Forms. 
and we're going to go right back here and I'm going to take you back one more time to see that gorgeous form you met, made and there it is. So I hope this helps. I think this is going to be one of your very favorite tools in your tool chest from now on. Thank you.